August, 7 p.m. Sitting in the tree line across the highway from where the Siren's hideout was, Blackthorn looked through the scope and took observation of where those wannabe soldier spit tails to walk. By the end of the day, there'd be a whole lot of corpses with bullet holes in them, and he'd be on the way to Belize with new entertainment. He can almost taste their thighs. That's how much he knew Thitri was at hand. Argo 2, this is Argo 6. He spoke softly into his radio. How's the few? I got thermals on the four war scarred. Argo 2 responded. Oh, the sea's warm, by the way. Just the way I like them. We could trank her ass. Can I have her? Sir, why the hell not? Blackthorn chuckled to the speaker. <laughs> in fact, everyone in this channel, if you could take one alive, you just got yourself a new girlfriend. Fuck what Changeling says. So long as we kill the major players, he's not going to give it to him if we got take some low-ranked putang. He moved his eyes away, looking at the steady curtain of gray rain pelting the road ahead and the thundering deep dumbbree of noise with the rainfall left as it splattered everywhere. He was soaked to the bone sitting out here, waiting for the dark, but it'll all be worth it in the end. That changed a few minutes later as bright lights lit up the relative gloominess of the distance. A few seconds after that, the heavy thrum of a car sounded, soon revealed to be a Carolina Police Department cruiser. Though technically this part of the road belonged to the jurisdiction of the Equestria County Service Department, the line between Carolina and Equestria County was close enough that the CPD and ECSD kept tabs on the area. Argo 6, Argo 3, clicked the radio. We got a problem inbound. CPT cru cruiser. Vice says action, over. Set up the smoke screen, see if you can scare him off. And we can't? Blackthorn gave an evil grimace. You know what to do. As her headlights lit up the ECSD fan in the roadblock, Mentally Jasmine slowed her cruiser down and spoke it to her radio. Dispatch 60D of 1 here. Stag briefly uttered from the radio speaker, followed by a teeny voice. This is Dispatch. Go ahead, 60D of 1. I'm on Old Horsetail Road. There's an ECSD roadblock here. Know anything about it? Nothing we were informed of. There were reports of flooding out there, but that was a few hours ago. I keep on the pipeline with ECSD dispatch and see what we got. Over. Roger that. I'll go have a talk with them and see what's on going on. 60D1 out. Metalli pulled out the block and stepped out of the car. Hey guys, what's up? The first man, tall, dark, and seemed to wear the ECSD uniform like he was born in it, gave a rough smile. Evening, officer. His partner didn't say a word, merely not blind. So, what's with the roadblock? Our dispatch didn't have anything on it. The deputy shook his head. Figures. Hey, Iron Sights! Pop in the van and call dispatch. See what the fuck's going on. Iron Heights uh, Sights nodded his head. Yeah, sir, thanks, Arts. Instead, hopping in the van. Sarge shrugged, his, shrugged. Drain using his arms as new points to start micro waterfalls from. Sorry about that. I called them myself, but my ex is working dispatch tonight. I don't really want to deal with that, you know? Yeah. Metali said, relaxing a little. I can understand. So what's up? He pointed back there. Rock Creek Bridge is partially washed out. The section overpassing both the creek and the Sacramento River is un highly unstable. Sorry, Solder. Galter and Stacey called us to barricade the area since we're the closest to the scene. See, Blink? Wait. Is it the bridge that half mile down that way? Yeah, but I guess you want to give enough people a warning. Hey, I just follow orders. I don't question them. What about the other side? Heard some Sinetown BT folks are covering that end, he told her. Personally, I'd be surprised if you hear about that end. You know how bad their dispatch is. Matali nodded. The Sinetown Police Department's own dispatchers were notorious for giving wrong or false information. And worse, it was clearly an institutional problem given that enough people had been fired over the years, and the issue still had not gone away. It was so bad as he heard rumors that the Sunnytown City Council was considering shutting down disp dispatch and contracting out to CPD or ECSD. Yeah, well, look on the bright side. You get to be dry on your cruiser. My partner and I had to stand here and get waterlogged until someone from Caltrans gets their ass out here. I'm sure that's going to be a while. Sure that the guys were on the up and up, and that the bridge washout was likely true, she so gave them a quick, friendly wave and went back to the cruiser. So he opened the door. Riser Rayer went off. Six India One, this is dispatch. ECSD reports that no, 
They have no, repeat, no assets in the area. ECSD assets are now en route to assist you, and we've informed them that they are armed and dangerous. Roger that, Metali says as he began to turn away from her cruiser, and then felt a sudden ripping shock as a round passed through her. Through her. Bulletproof vest notwithstanding. She spun and crashed to the ground, feeling the red splatter around her face as she tried to get up, but felt completely numb. As she tried to move, she suddenly heard the squishy footsteps of someone approaching her. She look, looked up and saw Sarah standing there, reaching for his shoulder harness. You know, shame you had to be so noisy, he told her in a matter-of-fact voice. If you tried to drive off, we would have just left you alone. But then you had to turn and that spelled trouble. Well, can't have that. He pulled out of his jacket what looked like a Mateba for, uh, four five point four five four. For a moment, I wonder if I could get you. You got a pretty face, and I'm sure you're a cop. You have a body that matches, but boss says you'd be too high profile to take with us. Sorry, but that's just bad luck, you know. He ain't a gun in her face. I'll make it as painless as possible. Taking no chances and knowing her life was in line, she lashed towards her hip for her service pistol, pulling out to aim. There was a flash of lightning, and a split second later, the ominous boom of thunder, as well as the flash of a muzzle and the bark of a round going off. Elsewhere, thundering peal of lightning outside, and two people climaxed. Katana rolled off to find, You're getting better at this. She told him in a breathy voice as he collapsed on the bed next to him. He smirked. Of course, I'm a prince. I studied swordsmanship, my dear, and a swordsman must always know when to parry and thrust. He sat up and looked at a clock in their room. Hmm. It seems that their plans go at peace. The eye of the hurricane should be on the summit of Mount Shasta in a few hours. From there, we use the bell to absorb its power. And once the hurricane goes away, everyone could be speechless on shock, and that should give us the remainder of the week to complete our plans. Good. I have three teens disposing of the last of the problems now, said Grand Wolfersley. That idiot Chainsley never realized his handler is one of our deep cover agents, and she'll be going to hiding now. I have done mine. I took the liberty of giving her a new identity and the, shall we say, ownership of our va of your vacated gods in Numea. If it removes the soul thorn on that side, I'll personally grow for all of my lands in New Caledonia with my utmost gratitude. She got off. Do the eat. Well, you excuse me, dear. I must go into the inspection of my troops. You think that it's just routine battery of inoculations, given all the places we go in the world. As soon as that's done, we'll train them on their new abilities. I might just have to promote Petty Officer Rush and her partners in order to train the whole of them. I'll give you some consideration. At least they know I should be a run off. Not that I can think of. She said, just before a chirp started on the laptop of his desk. Hold on, I might have something. She sat down at the desk and looked at the alert. Um, looks like one of my senior officers isn't as loyal as I thought. Guess I'll have to do some pruning. A sound looked across her face as she admitted, Same too. A rapping together since we were children. This won't be easy. Sometimes the path to power can need to run and make strong, final decisions that would be unsavory to mere comments. He told her, I cared my, about my cousins, but they were in the way of my power, so I had to deal with them. Unsavory business, but if you wish to truly ascend to the pinnacle of perfection, then you have no choice. She nodded. After all, she already ended the lives of people she cared about. Not just the member of sisterhoods, but Siren's actually close to her. But this leads me to the throne of eternity. Then one more body will fall. Meanwhile, back with Sonata. Looking out the window of their new hotel room, Sonata watched the rain fall. It had been hard enough getting a new hotel. Many people had evacuated Kerala for other cities, and so they were lucky to be able to trade up for a place farther down south, closer to Sacramento, yet close enough that they could rush back to Kerala as soon as they could be. Even still, they knew they were being tracked by Sonata Crust. So they stood still in a very tense readiness situation. So the past time, Sonata watched the weather. Right now, it was a comfort to her, truth be told. It was all he has been. Maybe in another life, she was a dolphin. 
or a seal, some sort of hobby aquatic thing, swimming in the ocean and not worrying about a single thing, just singing a song. Maybe it sings God right in this life. She lives a simple existence now, entertained by the rains and smiles and tacos, her favorite food. After all, miles to the north and care a lot, that's where her friends led. Normal lives with easy pleasures and nothing more difficult than the daily rituals of being young. Urban girls growing up and striving for the future. Certainly not the hellish existence she and her sisters had led. Regardless, they do this together. This is triplets were meant to do. Still didn't make you like any of it, though. There was a chirp of a door key, followed second layer by Arya coming in through the door. She wore a wig that obscured her military short hairstyle, and she was carrying herself more like Rarity as it seemed like a different person. So, darlings, she announced, saying the bags on the style, I have prepared a repast for us. Good to see of the rural de Burgos from the far off land across the street, as it were. Ari, knock it off. Adagio, not taking her eye else off the television, said, But Adagio, darling, it. Arya. She is one of our closest friends, and she deserves to be treated better than that. Now the scissors snarled, so knock it off. Hey, ease up, sis, okay? Rarity means a lot to me, too. They all do, so calm the hell down! Arya retorted. Adagio finally looked at her sister, then back to the TV. Sorry, was all she said. Sonata went over and hugged her older sister. It's okay, Ari. She murmured, I miss them. We all do. I'm going to see them again until we get out this alive, Dazio said, continuing to watch whatever was on the television. That's even assuming we'll be able to. So he didn't turn to look at our sisters, or if they even want to see us again. What are you crazy? They're our friends, Arya sounded. Why wouldn't they want to see us? Should they be a little mad at us, or does this appear? Oh, because we're killers, Ari. Dazio interjected. Sooner or later, they're going to find that out, and... She sighed, to continue a soft voice. Even if we want to live a different life, can live a different life, the blood won't wash off our hands. We'll never see the world as they do, no matter how much we want to. So, there's no hope for us? Sanaya asked. Dorothea got up from her seat and went over to hug her sisters. We're together. So as long as we have each other, there's always hope. Meanwhile... Sitting in a rented car in an empty parking lot across the street from the hotel, Satina Crush looked at her tablet. Or rather, the infrared feed the drone was feeding to said tablet. Found you bitches! She hissed with a malicious grin. Reaching over to the passenger seat, she grabbed one of the burner phones she procured for the mucin. Flipping it open, she quickly tapped a cryptic text to a prearranged phone number. Hey ya! Uh, found that pizza place you were raving about! Going to swing by later, get me some slices! I'll let you know how they taste. Bye! As the text was sent, she sent, bent the phone back until it snapped, then slipped to the box of phones she'd throw away later. Stepping out of the car, she reached into her pants for a small flick blade, sees the guy as a handyman's tool. Looking at the darkening sky, she knew it was only going to be a matter of hours until darkness came, and with that, the cloud cover that would make for a decent descent moonless night. Perfect for infiltrating the flea bitten hotel. And she played her cards right, she could get rid of Dusk and her sisters with minimum of fuss. She would even have more time to play. A race is seen as a lover's back gone wrong. And given that Dusk and her sisters were actual sisters, the scandal would be focused on and put her in the clear. She smiled. Soon she hit that bit's Dusk. It's just about time, too. Nobody made her look like second place. Nobody. The little cunt thought she was a freak because she knew how to use knives effectively. And had the nerve to joke about how Santina was just a little sonata. She wasn't going to put up with that kind of shit from a cunt who wouldn't be as talented with blades or intelligence. Plus, Dusk was a seaman. Santina was already a petty officer on her way up to the promotion ladder. Well, after night, Santina may be the freak, but Sonata would be a corpse. And the only one in this world for a real Sonata Dusk, and that's me. Meanwhile, back with Shining. All units, we have potential officer down at Old Horsetail Road, just north of Rock Creek Bridge Parkway. Suspects are presumed to be impersonating ECSC personnel. CPD, SPD, and STF assets will assist. All ECSC personnel are required to stay out of the area for the duration to prevent misidentification. Shiny had just turned to Brookstone in Mongolia when the sound came out. 
Reaching over to tap his radio, he said, This is for call 5, I'm moving in. His heart raced as he cued the siren and took off as fast as the SUV would allow. It certainly couldn't do the speeds of his earlier virus personal car or the police cruiser he used to drive, but this would at least keep him from sliding all over hell and gone while racing around the rain-soaked streets. Then he heard another voice on the channel. Dispatch, this is Sierra 227. I'm not far from the location, moving in. Somehow, he wasn't surprised that Sandalwood was going to try to get involved. Negative, Sierra 227. All ECSD personnel have been ordered to stay clear. Despite, I'm on an FBI unit distant commies with an FBI checking on. I don't think it's going to be confused with normal EC personnel. Sign reach for the radio. Dispatch, 4 call 5 here. Has Sierra 227 meet me up with me, and I'll keep a charge on her. I know her personally. Oh, you're not going to get a date, Sandy? That's so sweet. Sandy went gust over the light, and a few people listened and laughed to his grin. Dispatch, this is Ace of Hellwarn. The boss suddenly announced over the line, I'm in the area as well. I'll step around there, date. After that, four other speakers, one CPD, three SPD, announced that they were moving in as well. SPD emergency. <laughs> oh yes, this is dispatch. Ready for with Agent Hallline. She'll be in command. We're going to have an ambulance in the area. Though due to the current situation, it might not respond immediately. No one spoke and the line was clear. Civilian needs were going to need to prioritize and that any of them injured, including the officer down at the scene, would have to survive. Or not. Ignoring the rest of the chair, Shining instead did what came normally in these situations. Rope power that he'd been taught during his days at the police academy. Double checking his body armor by feel, checking his gun and his ammo, and checking for the nice PTW that he'd been issued as an additional armament. He wasn't too comfortable about it. He'd been trained on a CPD's M96 expansionary, but they would be reasonably similar. Yeah, reasonably similar. He tied himself. Shining, you're going to a potential firefight, and you're blowing off important details. That shit's going to get you dead, very, very dead. If that happens, you know Kane is going to find a way to bring you back from the grave and kill you again just for being stupid. Not only what else to say, he continued on, racing towards the location, knowing that whatever was awaiting him, it was going to be bad. Very, very bad. Meanwhile, early evening descended on Seattle as he had carried the tiny shopping bags. Coco pranced around as happy as she could be. While the rest of her family had left Canterlot to take care of business, her aunt Solier decided to visit Seattle to visit some old haunts of hers. She so he happily taken both Simmer and Coco with her. The former was obvious. Since that Simmer was Solier's daughter, it just wanted to show her child everything about Simmer's dead set to see as far as she could. It was also good for Coco as well, given that she knew very little about her uncle Autumn. It wanted to know more. She was getting to know her aunt and cousin as it was, so spending time with them was paramount given they were returning to France at the end of the month. Enjoy yourself, Coco. Simmer asked as the trio appeared out of the taxi, headed back to the hotel to drop off their bags before they went to dinner. Yeah, I'm getting to spend time with my favorite cousin. I've never been to Seattle before, so this is great, she squeaked in delight. Favorite cousin, Solara said with a bit of amusement. Well, and favorite aunt, she said with a link. Granted, I don't really know any of my aunts, uncles, cousins from my own side of the family, so you guys get it by default. This brought a grin to Sumer's face, and a giggle to Solaris. Well, if it makes you feel any better, you're my favorite cousin. Sumer responded back, dropping her bags to briefly hug her cousin, who seemed to melt into the older girl's embrace. Hey, when you get back, you have to promise you'll meet some of my friends, okay? Coco insisted. They're just the best. Plus, you get to meet my mentor, Twiley. She's awesome, too. You have to meet him before you go back. Promise me, okay? Between Coco's hugs and the placating look of her mother, Shimmer had to agree. Shimmer still felt some trepidation about meeting other people at the moment, especially people who could cause her issues given her royal status. She knew that being social was her biggest weakness. Outside of her circle of friends, she hadn't socialized much since her boyfriend's betrayal, and despite her friend's attempts, she was becoming more of a wallflower as late. As Princess of France, that wouldn't do. She had to be worthy of her nobility, even when it bothered to do so. Sure, Simmer conceded. I'm okay with that. 
Okay, I'll call Sweetie and set something up. I asked Crackle, but she's out of town. Maybe you can meet her next time you're in town? Coco Ch chirped. You might want a few days until the town's recovered from the hurricane, though, Coco. She blessed. Oh, hadn't thought about that. As the three ladies walked to the library, a hotel representative greeted them, holding up a package. Excuse me, madame. The, this package does the ride for you, FedEx. The woman had curly eggplant and dark fuchsia hair and deep magenta eyes. She seemed to be some continental descent, so she had a clear American accent. Solaire looked at the girls. Go ahead and take the stuff up. Let me sign for this and I'll be up soon. Sansetia, would you be so kind as to make reservations for us? Wherever you two is to go. Sarah nodded. Sure thing, Mom. She said, take your mother's bags as well, and cousin in tow and head towards the elevators. Solaire waited until her charges were just out of eyeshot before looking at the packets, which was DHL, an envelope. Solaire shook her head. There was one thing she hated. It was having instructions that way. I figured that DCI and I would send someone sooner or later, despite my re request not to. They didn't. The woman shook her head before flashing a bass. Agent Saffron Masala, U.S. Department of Pomo Lake Security Service. We were obligated to send someone the moment we found you were in the country. And given that the CCRI officially asked our assistance, I'm glad I was able to meet you here. Slayer suddenly felt a shiver. Is something wrong, Agent Masala? Solaire always disliked dealing with the General Director of Eternal Security, but generally the DCRI was usually good by her request to not require protection. For them to change their minds, all I wanted to do was to give Sunset into my life, so she wouldn't have to be Princess all the time, Solaire mourned eternally. And now this? Will Coco be tied into this as well? Please, just look at the report, ma'am. Solaire put her badge back and then produced a car. Dinner, 8.30 p.m. It's on me. She began walking away. If you excuse me, I had to pick up someone at the airport. So Larry looked at the card. The tasty treat. Funniest into the cuisine of Washington State. Calling on the Cuban proprietor. She blinked. As of that, that's 40 minute, five minutes north of here. She called back. Are you sure about this? I saw her get right back. I grew up in that restaurant. I know it's the best. Before Solaire could say anything further, the DSS agent rounded the corner and disappeared. Solaire fought to keep a straight face as she looked to where the agent had gone, then to the envelope, metaphorically burning a hole in her hand. The top had been torn open, revealing the letterhead of the DCRI was never been anything good. Slipping into her purse and hoping to have a chance to read it before tonight, the princess went off to the lobby to see about a car rental. Why is this getting worse and worse? Out in the roar of the rain, the visibility of the patrols was reduced. It wasn't for a fact that the OIC had been expecting something, so she wouldn't say what. The pro protocol would have been for them to reduce external patrols to someone every 15 minutes. But that wasn't the case. Instead, here they were, getting soaked to the bone with nothing to do. I need the partner, Hiradame, said, moaned. If I hear you bitch one more time about how we're stuck here. Lead rolled her eyes. Look, Dramami, all I'm saying is that the OIC is fucked in the head for putting us out here in the fucking soup. Okay, God, I need a date with a fist of black label just to make it through the rest of the goddamn day after this. And then I need some guy to treat me right and make me very satisfied. Her dame broke the old laughed. <laughs> look, if you're not hard up, go past your synth pop. So fuck anything. What, do I look like a poppin' parts to you? Her dame cut her off. Shh, you hear that? She whispered, crunching down to find less of a target. The action born of years of constant training. Lee brought her sniper rifle up, looking through the scope to target anyone but to look around. I don't see anyone! Pow! The shot was perfect, instantaneous. Round burning through the air, blasted through the scope into Lee's eye, punching out the back of her skull on a clean exit. Lee staggered for a second, lowering her rifle to reveal her ruined face before collapsing to the ground. Lee! Here, Dami screamed before rushing to the radio on the table near them. Whoever had taken out lead was one hell of a sniper. Here, Dami knew she was dead the moment she left cover. But she needed to warn the others, even if it meant her life. The commando witch had taken out of her hands by the key bar held to her throat. Oh, looks like I got me a real pretty one, was a long stone drawl. So, darling, should you tell me your name before or after update? 
Who darn I knew in a second what that meant. Go fuck yourself! All the same to you, miss. You're much more available. And the second voice. Here Dami felt her web belt being removed. She tensed up, ready to strike, but felt the knife prick closer. <laughs> You're fast. I like that, the first voice said. But you're too feisty, and I might have to end our relationship. Got it? The second Alicorn member looked at the first. Here, Dami couldn't make out the details, as he was wearing a monkey cap. Or when details he could make out, he was heavily armed. So what? You think you're going to get away with this? She snarled. Her answer was a fist across the face. Gray, get your girlfriend. You need to teach your girlfriend some manners. The assailant says, Here, Dami spot up blood. Yeah, later, Maroon. But leave her mouth alone. I might need it later. Yeah, well, let me leave you on your date. I need to go tell Gold we have Patrol 1 out of commission. Wait, you'll need some help unwrapping your gift, don't you? Maroon reached over and one fell swoop, pulled down Hiradami's plants and underwear. Oh, drawstring type. Looks like she was ready for you, buddy. Maroon said, clapping Gray on the shoulder. Yeah, look at mine. Now go let the boss know we're ready. Go find your own girlfriend. Me and Sweetie need to hear to make a radio arrangements. Ruth moved to the distance. Without Love Gray in a compromising position between Hiradame. Well, since this is our first time, honey, he said, hissing to her ear, I'll just park in number one. But if you like it that way, what's much fun we can have, okay? I'll kill you. Hiradame snarled, even as he could hear him unbuckling his own pants. It's the last thing I ever do. I'll kill you. Well, don't the Frenchies call an orgasm the little dance? He said with a grin. The grin fell a second later as a shock, teeny bang occurred. Buff looked down to see Lead with the last of her strength, using her remaining eye to arm her pistol with shock gray around the heart. Despite whatever padding the man had indicated a bulletproof vest, dwelling blood around the hole so the truth of Lee's armor piercing around striking true. Lade gave Herodamia a weak, friendly smile before dying. You bitch! Great, instinctively slashed Herodamia's throat wide open with his knife before falling back. Feeling the slice of blood spurt out, Herodamia knew she was dead and only had seconds to act. With she over the table where her pistol and radio were, she turned to aim at Gray, who was down on the ground, and his pants around, down around his ankles. Gurgling something that sounded like, Honey, we're through. She fired twice. Once at his manhood. Ow! 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 To right between the eyes. She didn't notice if either round hit as he clutched to the ground, lifeblood staining the front of her shirt. With her strength fading, Hiradame set the radio to emergency channel, then let the broadcast key open. With the sounds of the rain and no voice to counter it, it would be the best chance he had to warn her fellow sirens who were under attack. Her duty done, she crawled over to Lee's ball and managed to cradle her friend in a hug before she took her final, choking breath. Claxon split the air as the siren base went into lockdown. All personnel went into action stasis, relying on training. Each member of the units assigned to the main facility moved as one, falling to the familiar cadence as they slid to the position. Standing in the middle of the command center, Katana looked at those assembled around her. All stasis, report! Our perimeter under control, ma'am! Came the response of one of the sirens assembled at a command console. All units in position! A second siren at another console spoke up. Air perimeter is being swept and there are no signs of intruders. All final locations are secured are being manned at this time. We have reached the bolt hole, a third one responded. Unknown forces attacking! I know my ass, Katana hissed. Looks like the scars moved in. That's a negative, ma'am. From what reports we're getting, these are SOFs, not Arrowhead or CSIS, the siren said. And Eric just tasted in her mouth. Good. Then we don't need to send back up there just gangsters who went to boot camp. She said with an easy grin. And for the OIC, we have people on standby. But they will not engage unless they run into serious opposition. It was this point, Rapacy walked in. Captain, may I have a word with you? Citizen XL. Katana says he walked up to her. What's up? When we got an earshot of the junior personnel, Repsy asked. Look, we've got personnel in trouble and we need to extract it. Katana shook her head. No, Rappy. Do you know why we put those particular in individuals in the bolt hole? Because bolt hole is a silly word? Because if we could get attacked here, and I honestly wish we hadn't, given it was our backup plan, they would be able to defend it. Fact is, we just got our backup facility taken down. 
If we send reinforcements, then we'll have personnel that'll be traced. They know that. And we can't know, and we know they know that. And they know we know they know that. She said theatrically. Do you take any intelligence courses? No. My sewer was more concerned with me learning weapon systems and the like. Rhapsody admitted. But still, this is Ellie we're talking about. It. I know! Ellie said, holding back her anger. But she's professional! Just like you and- Oh, or I thought you were! What's that supposed to mean? Rhapsody asked. The fact that you betrayed us, Katana thought. So she didn't focalize that. Instead saying, You're the excessive officer here, Ram Rhapsody. I'd like it. The fact that Ellie is in the middle of that is bad enough. And that despite what I told the others, yes, I know they're dealing with a problem. What aren't you telling me, Katana? The senior Siren will dare junior officer. Think about it. Do you think a Scars would just hand a job over to anyone? Much less get the CIA to sign off on letting them run ragged through the American hinterlands? No. It has to be someone the Americans have worked with themselves. And there are very few groups that fit the bill. Only one I know that CSIS would even bother with. I don't know the group's name, but they're all composed of people who've left various global special operations under dubious circumstances. Really? No, actually, I have no idea. I only know what I was told, and from the records the Admiral left me when he died. Got the feeling he didn't know too much about him. Whoever at CSIS does know about him, and well, they're not on our payroll. Well, they're in trouble, and I'm not standing idly by. I'm taking a small strike team out there to reinforce. This might all be done by the time you get there, XO. Yeah, and our troops might be dead, and they'll have access to our intel. Rhapsody cried. And when they get on that, they'll be on top of us like bees on honey. Katana shook her head. Fine, get a squad out there. If they're fine, have Ellie report in. If they're not, standard field pro disposal protocol. I don't like that, Kanta. You don't have to. Commander, Katana said, waving her rank in front of her subordinate. You just have to do it. Dismiss.